Okay, the daily rain commonest application of the ASDF 3.3. Am I pushing the envelope for build systems or am I in a therapeutic theory on the world and the system? That's what every common program is asking some point of course. And this is joint work with Robert Goldman and LFTP people who goes to the lab for this. So it's a, this is a project report on ESDF. ESDF is a de facto build system for common list. Who here does not choose common list? Oh wow, <laughs> that's your problem than I expected. Um, uh, which is a, well, we don't need an introduction to come on this thing. Okay, uh, some background, uh, my recent ESDF progress and lessons for the system. Some background, um, what makes this ESDF different is that it's a dev system, which means that it compiles and loads systems in the image. So C analog would be a mix of make, package config, lg.so and libc. Make because I compile, I order and compile actions to build things. Package config because actually I have to find them first, I have to locate where are the dependencies. And they do .so because I also locate those dependencies and those things at runtime when I load stuff in the image. And libc because there's this UIOP library that does um, IO and simple, simple things. ESDS is primarily designed to build common list code, but it's extensible in common list itself, so it can, at least in theory, be made to build anything. And it has a big focus on backward compatibility, and our motto is, if it's not backward, it's not compatible. Some history, well, it's the uh, end of time goes before 81. I don't know when exactly the system was built, but the channel has traces of it already. The SDF1 was half a kilobyte of code, and it worked. And the current ESDF 3.3 is 13.2 kilo lines of code. And just uh, so the last feature I added, proper face separation, uh, here it added about the same size of code as the original um, ESDF1. And actually, if you look at the diff, it's actually like five times that. So just adding this little feature, proper face separation, is in some sense more work than the original um, Code. In other sense, it's not more work because the genius is always uh, the initial thing, but in another sense, it's for effort at least. Uh, current limitations of ESDF is that it's not declarative enough. You have seen that, uh, I think, uh, this, this, whatever, who you pronounce your name? Sevalon? Yeah. okay. Sevalon uh, showed you the limits of ASDF. I think uh, guilty and uh, uh, I can't think if you get that or whatever. Um, only one global set of system versions, or one, only one global syntax, I mean one global everything, not just common list in general. Common list is based on global side effects, like everything is a global side effect. And compared to modern system like uh, build system like Bazel, it's using like, things like cross compilation, determinism, scalability. So we are still very old school in many, many ways. What's new? Uh, in previous talks, I discussed on how Common list can now be used as a scripting language, that's what they use in Sinatra, Ruby, and so on, whatever. Uh, not ESDF, yes, but Bazel list, we could uh, scale it build executables with Bazel that have a statically linked C extension. Well, now we can do that. In ESDF, you can take your ESDF 3.2 and the CFFI uh, toolchain and get that application library with statically libraries. We also add a thanks to LS scripting asynchronous support uh, with launch program. We also improved the source location configuration and we added the deprecation infrastructure. And real soon now we have proper face operation. So what is application delivery? Uh, you may all know about CFFI and CFFI Global, who doesn't know about that? Okay, well next then. Um, so now we can basically compile arbitrary code uh, into uh, your ESDF thing and it will be linked statically. Uh, we're missing support for per system compiler and things like so it's not a general system to build general C code, but it could be made one if you wanted, but at least there is a, a one place if I could change that deals with C compilation. So now if you want to fix C compilation in the context of common list, there is a, a, a one stop place, one stop shop for that C uh, this is just a public example. And to load the system or that the history of running system. Back in 201, you had to write to type all that to the system. 
or you had a short hand to remember that. In 209, we had a node system just before Gary King gave me the uh, maintainership. Uh, in 2013, we ha this happens to work now, and uh, now in 2014, maybe you can just edit if make. And the advantage of make is that unlike node system, well, most of the time make the same as node system, but if making something is actually making the binary, you not just load it, but you make the binary. If, if what you want is delivering a single facet for everything, make will do that. You, you, you tell make what you want it to do, and it doesn't have to be a system. But by default, it's not a system. Not a system, it's not a system. Making a binary, uh, since uh, ASDF3, we already can deliver a binary, but <coughs> initial extensions must be dynamically linked. And now with uh, CFFI2 chain and ASDF shader 2, uh, just this year, we can have like ASDF OS static image up through and that will create a development image where everything is pre pre-compiled and you can just restart it uh, instantly. Or you can deliver an application in static program up through. And that demo time also will have a demo effect. Of course we'll have a demo effect, it will not work. So uh, here we uh, so here's a program. Uh, user bin CL that's just called scripting, dash Q is uh, to load quick list, and dash SP ASDF means load the ASDF and build that package, and just make this workout timer dot static, so dot slash make static, you're going to recompile everything, and dump a static image, hello, hello, no, no effect, I don't know, okay, it compiles a lot of stuff, compiles with C, okay, and now that is dash L, there is, there is the workout timer dot static, I can file for you, dot static. So it's a dynamically linked executable, but if I look at uh, the libraries, all the libraries for dealing with org, uh, org orbits and other sounds are not present, or are statically linked. Um, you can do a jumping jack. Okay. And all the music libraries, the sound libraries are, are linked aesthetically. Okay, let's go back to... Uh, this is Trump, uh, WM, okay. Asynchronous uh, process is basically the, the equivalent of the ampersand in your shell script. You can now do things in, in, uh, in the background. ESDF 3.1 already had run program to, to replace all your shell scripting needs as long as you had only synchronous processes. Now with Fredo2 you can also have asynchronous processes and it does all the needs. There are limitations. Uh, ESDF, no, no, no. Kamulis does not have standard event loop that is portable to which you can integrate. So you can't like uh, learn something in the, in the background and be sure you have somehow to, to catch it and to wait for the process or you may have only processes depending on the implementation you use. There is no general signal support in Kamulis so you can't do things like signal SD or anything like that. But you, you can make do with pipes, and pipes are a pain to use manually, but you can write your macros that, that do that for you. So it's way better than shell programming. Yes, it sucks. It is like, just because it sucks, that means that it's not way, way better than programming in shell or Python or any crap like that to build language. And if you want a real serious system programming, uh, and a real event loop and support for all the fancy low level things, you can use IOLib, where it's Italian. Yeah. You can use IOLib, or I hope you can. And yes, IOLib requires a C extension, but guess what? You, you think C extension is just about much easier. <laughs> so, other changes. Uh, source location configuration. Uh, before, in the ESDF1, everyone has to be his own system administrator. You had to manually push all your directories to the central registry, and, and or you had to manually build a, a directory that was a sibling form, and when anything changed, you had to update that manually, or you had to write your own script to update that as well. Uh, basically, you had to be a system administrator in addition to being uh, a program. In ESDF2, we made the things uh, declarative. You, had a, you now have a declarative source registry. If you have a central registry, it's your node timer. But if you're a beginner, you can just let the thing work in your source registry, it just works. It's a hierarchical configuration, so you can let the system define things for you, and you can override things, or you can totally override the system and say, hey, it's a crap. Uh, yes? Five minutes. Oh, five minutes, okay. And uh, so, 
Uh, and now it includes a user local share common list source or common list. So whether you want to hide it from the user or include it, you can have it. Um, I added a source parameter cache, so if you want to do system expression, you can and it will greatly speed up your search. Otherwise, you can just enjoy it. There's also an XBG based directory um, interface that you can use. Um, deprecation infrastructure means that if you keep using uh, all deprecated things like Rachel program, which is a very bad API, instead of UIUP run program, it will complain, it will First, if you attach a warning, it will use a warning. The next version, it will use to an error. And in the next next version, it will just error at compile time if you didn't delete the code. So you can use this. It's also exposed. Phase separation. So ESDS is extended extensible with common list. And how do I load the common list extension with ESDF? And how does, what is the extension itself for that extension? Well, Call ESDF recursively and as many phases as necessary. And what if an extension is modified? Well, you must rebuild everything that transitively depends on this extension. And what if a library is needed in multiple phases? You want to only build it once. Of course, that's not how ESDF123 worked, so I had to add proper phase separation to um, ESDF3.3. Um, separating phases, I had to define an operation, define up for just defining the system. So now when, if I want to track the dependencies of defining a system, defining a system must be an action in the action graph. And so I need an operation defined up just for reading the ESD file. And just that bit is, is quite uh, um, tricky because now the, the call graph for fine system is, looks like something like that. And then load store uh, uh, calls load. So it was not trivial and had also to generalize the uh, uh, cache into a session, and the session is shared across all, all the phases of the build. Uh, the traverse holograph I had to add in 3.3 a new traverse holograph which basically query if something is up to date and don't schedule it for, for rebuild if it's not up to date, but just like drop it, and this way you can invalidate uh, things and reload. Um, so if one of your extensions is out of date, you must, uh, you, must not, you must not trust any of your dependencies because it could be dependencies that, are, that were added by the previous version of the build extension we are using. So you must uh, just drop it and restore from scratch. And ESDF1 had one bit associated to uh, its traversal, plus metric that was buggy. ESDF3 had two bits of the uh, state added in its traversal, and ES3.3 does have three bits. And plus a uh, of phase. So every time we add features, actually the traversal is much more complex and anticipated. And yet, in a, in a way, it's still the same design. In a way, it's still the old, the good old thing uh, that that model implemented based on Kit Pitman's ID. And yet, to get it right, you had like, to rewrite the code many, many times to add many, many features that were implicit in the design but never guessed before by anyone. Uh, there are plenty of incompatibility that was introduced, that's why ASDS 3.3 is not going to be released today, like ASDS 3.2.1, which is going to be released. So phase separation is something that everyone needs. Uh, even in May, people use include, yes, uh, include target that was made by make was made for itself, and make and all these other systems have the same failure that failure mode as ASDS 1, just that they don't do phase separation correctly. Some languages, like Racket, have a great system for phase separation, and you are getting the best system for phase separation of them all. But it's not general, not general purpose, but the system can only do the with those. Bazel has a very Bazel has a very interesting design where they, they, they have an extension language, but the, the extension language itself is not extensible. So um, literally I'm not to at all. But that's how they manage to So in, in a way, ESDF is the bleeding edge of build systems. <laughs> Uh, that, that should make you uh, be very sorry and sad about all the little systems in the world. Including <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, the big image. I can tell you something about the little you know, system. So evolving SDF and SDF sucks, but less. It's amazing what you can do with social few kilobytes of code. The other thing I did talk like to to see a model. Evolution is costly, it's like a lot and lot of effort, but the alternative to evolution is um, not very pleasant. 
evolution also gets worse and worse as the user and code bases grow. So basically, I have to go all over the place to find who, who I am introducing incompatibilities with. And uh, a backward incompatible change can take one to two years. So quickly, it's still actually it's painful, but it's still very useful to to make it only one or two years instead of two to three or four years. Yes, yes, yes. To me, uh, the ultimate purpose of the bill system is division of labor. It's enabling different people to work together. And they have a, a, a paper or whatever, a chapter on that. Um, thank you. Some years ago, I tried to integrate a uh, C build system into the SDF, and one of the problems I ran into was that I tried to add parameters to operations so yes. that I could pass flags into the build system, but that doesn't no, work. No, no, ASDF was not at all. Well, at some point, everyone thought that it was possible, but the way that ASDF does things, it's not at all possible to add flags to operations. Actually, with all the refactoring we've done for ASDF Trigger 2, now, it becomes conceivable to add uh, flags to operations if we normalize them or whatever. But up till, up till very recently, uh, adding flags to operations was totally broken. Some people were, were doing it, but it was totally broken. Uh, now it's conceivable to do. But it's, it's, it's not done, it's just conceivable to add. <laughs> like, after a massive... Yes. Uh, did you switch the digital notes? Yes. Uh, I have a question about the binary uh, that, that you built. Uh, yes. It has, it is pretty deep. I can see it's... Uh... Well, it, it has a... It has a... It has a list that has an SBCL image, it has an SBCL runtime, it has all statically linked libraries, so yes, it's big. And I have another thing, is that if you want to... I, I recommend scripting, uh, and the way I do it, I have a multi-call binary. I compile all my scripts, like I have hundreds of scripts, I compile them all into one single binary. So yes, the binary is large, <laughs> having uh, 150 megabytes of my binary, I have one 500 megabyte binary, it's a 10 times smaller than it. So you basically have the whole world used by your application stored in this single binary? Yes. But, but in this case, for the demo, this is not only this application. But what I use uh, for my uh, scripting is something that I call my scripts in one better. OK, homework assignment. You compute how much the disk space is worth that that uh, space uh, corresponds to. It's not a disk space. It's a RAM space. Because if you have, once, once again, 100 different programs and they can't share the memory, then it will be very expensive. Extra credit also compute the RAM. Uh, so CL file, I know that I wrote UIOP 
precisely because he often does other things were not uh, up to snuff. But uh, even with your IOP, you are, you are, you are sub like, your subject is a limitation of the implementation of uh, Very simple patterns like store or store.store store work, but other patterns may not work. And, and actually, yes, store, which of store and store.store store you should use depends on the implementation. And in your IOP, there is a variable that tells you which you should use if you want everything. So, yes, uh, do, doing pass names properly in, in common list in a portable way is very hard. That's why this library that I wrote that spent a lot of time writing called UIOP. If you, if you care about portability, I'm not sure why you should, but if you do, uh, you should definitely try and use UIOP. More questions? Okay, thank you very much.